then I call Porter Williams. Um, Mr Chairman, firstly I want to start with the name of this bill and I know we will go through title and commencement at some stage but I think it's really interesting that we're calling this social housing reform transaction mandate bill when this is actually about state housing. State housing owned by the people of New Zealand. Every member in this house, every member sitting in the gallery, people watching at home. State housing. When did state housing become social housing? State housing is a provision of housing for the people of New Zealand. Social housing is about providing for vulnerable communities. Mr Smith, state housing has long been um, a treasure, a taonga in, uh, in the state's arsenal to keep people well in communities. There is no doubt that uh, uh, people who are able to put down roots in a community long term, the uh, benefits to them and to the wider community and wider society are exponential. Social housing is about providing a specific need for a specific vulnerable group. My understanding from my uh, interactions with Housing New Zealand as a, a, a provider of refuge uh, accommodation for women and children uh, who experience family violence is that Housing New Zealand Corporation was set up to support the delivery of state housing when people couldn't access housing themselves and they had a community arm which took care of the social need of specific vulnerable groups like the disabled, like the mentally unwell and like women and children escaping violent relationships. When did state housing become social housing? When this government decided to confuse the two, to make it um, an issue around just the provision of social housing, it is not. State housing is the state's commitment to house its people. That's what this is about, and that's why we oppose this bill. Mr Speaker, Labor has been housing its people since the day we first became a government. It sits at the heart of who we are as Labor. It is our core value to ensure that people have a decent roof over their head. Mr, Mr. Chairman, in times of record homelessness, this government is seeking to sell off our asset, what's owned by us as people, and that is despicable. And then we have this issue of accountability where the ministers, the ministers have complete control over the sale process, complete control, who they sell to, what they actually get for that asset, and that, Mr Speaker, is unprecedented in this uh, in this parliament. The, de the departmental disclosure statement said the transaction mandate is an unusual legal mechanism. An unusual mechanism, legal mechanism. Does that not cause us some alarm? Well, it should do. If you're listening to this speech at home, you should be alarmed because the ministers will have unfettered powers to do what they like with our assets. And that's not right, Mr Chairman. They can determine who they make the transaction with and how much they sell it off for. And this is our housing. These are our tenants. These are, um, these are the people that the minister, is, uh, the minister is wanting to say when, when there are issues around state housing tenants, that actually they're vexatious. When state housing tenants want transfers, oh no, they, they turn that transfer down because they didn't like the colour of the door. Well, that's rubbish. I have never had a constituent who is desperate either for a house or wants a, a state housing transfer say to me, no, I don't like the colour of that door, I'm not going to take that house. I want the minister to actually prove those statements because what they are doing, are they making the people of New Zealand think that people who access state care, whether it be state housing or social service provision, that they are less than anybody else. Well, they are not. They are completely entitled 
to uh, the provision of social services, and they are completely entitled to that state care, and we should support them to do that. We should not vilify them. And this government, Mr Chairman, um, Mr. Chairman, Chairman does vilify people who access uh, state services. And this government really would want those people to go away. And what do they do? Rather than actually provide the, the type of mechanisms which will develop people, give them strength and allow them to get on with what they need to do, they pull the rug from underneath them. So who are, we, who are going to purchase these, these fine assets at the fire sale that will happen? Well, it won't be our community housing providers the ones that actually will, will provide to the most vulnerable. Because, do you know why? <clears throat> because they don't want the houses in such poor condition that this government has let run down. Oh, I can see um, Mr Nuttall um, looking confused. I'm sure, Mr Nuttall, if, yeah, I'm sure, Mr Nuttall, if you were to have a look around uh, the areas where uh, uh, people live uh, close to where you live, state houses, you would, you would see that the condition of some of our <coughs> state houses isn't that good. So community housing providers didn't want to take on this stock because of the cost not only to purchase it, but the cost to actually bring it up to some kind of standard because they don't want their uh, clients, the people that they service, to live in damp, mouldy homes that need uh, maintenance. So they didn't want them. So where will these houses go? They will go to corporates. And we know that corporates are not driven by social outcomes. They're not driven by delivering uh, uh, warm, dry, affordable homes to people. They're driven by profit. And the profit motive for me, Mr Chairman, is not one that actually delivers good social outcomes. There, I am really concerned uh, that when these houses are moved on to um, corporates, that the tenants of these homes are not going to have security of tenure. Uh, security of tenure is really important, whether you're a tenant whether you, or whether you own your home. The ability for you to raise a family, to put down roots, to engage in community life, to build some social capital from the people who live in your neighbourhoods and... and close to you, is the very fabric of good society. We know that a lot of our social harms at the moment are because our populations are so transient, we cannot get services to stick to them because they move uh, from place to place, from couch to couch, from one um, desperate housing situation to the next. Mr Chairman, I, I am... Um, I am really angry that we are at the point where we are selling off what is an absolute tonga to this country, something that the Labour Party has built up over time and that, this, that national governments have actually recognised the value of. When we introduced low interest loans and we introduced capitalisation of family benefit to get people into owning their own homes, when the national government came in after us, they kept those policies because they knew how vital it is to a good society to have people own their own homes. They knew the value of having secure homes, whether you own them or the state owned them. They knew the value of housing their population. We should not feel that being in a state house means we are any less. Being in a state house should be a gold standard. Unfortunately, our state houses have been so poorly maintained, they are no longer a gold standard. And, the, and people who live within them cannot guarantee uh, that they will be healthy and well. Mr Chairman, I'm going to contribute more um, during the course of, of this um, committee stage, but I thank you for uh, your indulgence.